What's up, Spawning Grounds Grumps? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for December 21st, being held at the Spawning Grounds. Our cookware for this rotation is the Reflux 450, the Splatana Stamper, the Blob Blobber, and the Goo Tuber. We have one of the best painters in this composition. The Reflux 450 has some incredible paintability, and it has one of the best damage outputs in the entire game. You just gotta make sure that all those three shots are hitting whatever you need to. You only really need to charge this thing up whenever you need to make your aim tight for aiming at something like a steelhead. And the reflex player is going to want to get as much painted as possible. The stamper, blob blobber, and goo tuber have an incredible damage output. And the walls we have here are also extremely useful for that splatana stamper. Steelheads will activate their bomb almost right at our level, making it an easy splat. But the downfall of this composition is how hard it's going to be to get all these walls painted. All of our weapons have some decent wall painting, so make sure you put some extra effort in on getting those walls painted on every chance that you get. On higher hazards, you're going to need to lure as much as possible over to the basket in order to get those eggs up to quota quickly. And with our damage output being just a little bit awkward, it'll be helpful to have those walls painted in case we need an escape strategy. With our range on this composition, if we're pushing towards shoreline targets, we will need some help, and whenever we splat it, we need to make sure we get our way back to the basket. Our damage kind of needs to be dealt really quickly to splat things before we get overrun. This makes big shots a really big problem in this composition. That Splatana Stamper is going to need to get down there in order to take them out, so make sure you support them as much as you can. On a high tide, we have an issue with the Blob Blobber shots going right through the grates. So the Blob Blobber needs to focus all their damage right there at the center of the basket. That means the Goo Tuber and the Splatana Stamper are going to have to use the range that they have in order to put that extra defense that we need on that side of the map. We're going to need to jump in between these platforms, so make sure you do your best to keep as many of these walls painted as possible. There's not that many on a high tide, but they need to be painted almost the whole wave. On a low tide, we also deal with the same issue on the extended shorelines. In the first half of the match, we'll need to make sure that we push towards some of those targets so that way things don't get too crazy. But you also need to do your best to lure steelheads, scrappers, and moths to the basket. Be careful about stunning something and the eggs being just way too far away from the basket in order to reach that quota. Whenever we have a charger at spawning grounds that has piercing damage, it needs to be on extra lesser control, doing as much work possible to keep the area clear. That way whenever we need to splat a boss, we're not getting bounced around by the lessers. On a Kohawk charge, I know it'd be really fun to take that Splatana Stamper out there and start splatting some Kohawks, but the Blob Lobber and the Reflux have the best mobility of this composition. But honestly, as long as two people are in those turrets at all times, it'll be easier to run those eggs. On a Glowfly's occurrence, it may be a little hard to hold that damage line down. The Splatana Stamper needs to make sure that they're always doing horizontal slashes and only using a vertical slash in order to cause a little bit of damage to a goldie while it's on its way in. Remember those jumping slashes so that way you don't go sailing off into the horde. The Blob Blobber also needs to be really focused on keeping that damage line. The Reflex's damage output is based on it firing three bolts, and if those three bolts aren't connecting with one target, then you might find yourself getting bumped around. Try your best to keep that Goo Tuber focused on a goldie when it's on its way in. But don't forget how strong the tap shots are of the Goo Tuber. Once things start getting a little too close, start tap shotting at the horde, but make sure your shots are actually connecting with the enemies. Don't start shooting your teammates. We may need to jump to that other platform in order to get a little bit of safety for a moment. But remember, it's only mere seconds that we have whenever we jump from the other platform. We can use wall hangs, but with the way that the Salmonids work in Splatoon 3, they fall right off the ledge and splat you on their way down. Moving to that other platform may give you a little bit more safety, but as I said, it gives you mere seconds. Make sure you plan your way out, paint that wall near the basket, get your way back up to your teammates, and start holding your ground again. On a Griller's Occurrence, that same spot works incredibly well. The Reflux and the Blob Blobber can do a great job at small fry control, and that Stamper, as long as it's making connection with that Slash, it can splat them insanely fast. And the same thing with Glowflies. Be careful about dashing forward into being splat. During a Mudmouth Occurrence, since we have the Stamper and the Goo Tuber, it should be pretty easy to keep Lesser control. No matter which Lesser is spawning, it should be easy to keep control over them. Just make sure you stay focused on eggs and where those Lessers are coming from, but it should be a pretty fun wave. On a Mothership Occurrence, our longest range attack in the air is the Stamper and the Goo Tuber, so try to keep control over those Chinooks on their way down. The Blob Blobber has some really good range on reaching those coolers that are close to the shoreline, and that Reflux can do a great job on moving around this map and collecting eggs. Just keep in mind that the range is just a little bit short for taking out the Mothership while it's on approach. Try to stay yourself on the higher platforms, and if you've got the Stamper, make sure you use those horizontal slashes while the Mothership's on its approach, and then when it actually connects to the basket, start using those charged slashes cause that massive damage, and keep Mr. Grizz's egg safe. During a giant tornado, that Blob Lobber and the Goo Tuber should stay on either side of the egg chain, that way they can use their range 
without having to worry about so many salmonids dropping right on their head. On a Goldie Seek occurrence, we have some pretty fun options on what to do. The Spatana Stamper can try to keep pace behind the Goldie, with each slash potentially releasing two eggs. The Reflux can also try to keep pace in front of the Goldie, that way they can try their best to make all those three bolts hit with each attack. And we have Piercing Shot in the composition too, so Goldie Seek should go pretty well. Spawning Grounds is always a lesson in luring and mobility around the map. As long as we keep this map painted, and we maintain that damage output, we should be able to get some clears here on Spawning Grounds. But be aware, Spawning Grounds is always a tough map, so try your hardest and good luck. Okay, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Reflux 450. The Reflux 450 has one of the highest damage outputs and some of the best paintability in the entire game. It's like they put the Splushomatic in a bow almost. But luckily, the bow has the ability to fire a little bit further. But that charge up will probably be best used on bosses or causing some specific damage to a Kohawk. If you can keep the place painted and lessers on control, it'll make it easier for all of our big damage weapons to get around and cause that damage. It'll be easier for you to run eggs more than anyone else, so keep that in mind. The Reflux also has the hardest problem on reaching fish sticks from the ground floor and taking out stingers. So if you ever push your way towards the shoreline in order to take out a target, make sure you ping this way, that way your teammates can help you out, but then don't forget to run those eggs as quick as you can back to the basket. As long as you and another teammate are going down to the shoreline, you have plenty of damage output with any of these weapons, and you should be able to splat it without too much trouble, as long as the spawning RNG is being kind. Our second cooking utensil is the Spatana Stamper. With the charge slash of the Spatana Stamper being able to splat Kohawks, you're going to want to get in and cause that damage, and that attack also has an area of effect similar to a blaster. So just be careful about using that forward dash and getting yourself into trouble. Try to use jump shots whenever you're moving forward on an enemy. That way you keep yourself from having to wonder how far you're going to go forward. The stamper is also going to be the easiest weapon to take out fish sticks from the ground floor and to take out stingers. That vertical slash can take out multiple pots. The Spatana Stamper is honestly one of the best boss splatting tools in the entire game. And the weapon is almost better utilized as a long range weapon. With only using that ability to splat something really up close as a worst case scenario. So try to be as strategic as possible whenever you're using that up close damage. It's really easy to find yourself getting splat whenever you have one of those batanas, so be as strategic as possible with it. Our third cooking utensil is the Blob Lobber. The Blob Lobber is almost like a slosher and a nozzle nose mixed together, and it shares that same damage output that the nozzle noses have as well, which is great for this map. Try to make sure that you get those blobs moving around as much as possible, but be careful about stunning some things. The more damage output that you can do with the Blob Lobber, the better. Especially if that Splatana Stamper player is getting themselves down to the shoreline. That range that you have with the blobs is the longest range that we have in the entire composition. So if the Stamper player goes down to take out a big shot, start providing some support. The Blob Lobber can take out fish sticks and stingers pretty easily, as long as you aim on the right side of the fish stick rotation, allowing enemies to stay in your reticle for longer, and when you go to take out a stinger, make sure you fire up and down the pots, leaving less time in between taking out each pot. The Blob Lobber also fires in more of a forward momentum, so it'll be helpful to have just a little bit of height against your enemies, that way you don't have to have so much tunnel vision aiming straight up in the air. It'll also be really helpful for the Blob Lobber player to focus on lesser control, especially if the Goo Tuber player is using that piercing damage to put some damage onto those Kohawks. Which brings us to our last cooking utensil, the Goo Tuber. The Goo Tuber has a shorter range than the other chargers, but its strengths lie in the ability to cause extra tap shot damage. So try to do just a little bit of focus on noticing whenever salmonids are lining up. Cause some massive damage with that piercing shot, and then if something gets too close, you do have that extra tap shot damage in order to defend yourself. And like every other charger that we have, you have to get the timing just right if you want to take out a fish stick. But if you've got just a little bit of height on them, you can aim on the right side of their rotation, making it just a little bit easier to take them out. That extra tap shot damage also helps out if you want to take out a stinger, making each tap shot take out one pot at a time. And just like with the Blob Lobber player, try to see what that Splatana Stamper or the Reflux player is getting into. 
and see if they need any support. The Stamper, the Blob Lobber, and the Gootuber can do a pretty good job on taking out Flipper Floppers while they're in the air. Just be careful about how much tunnel vision you have whenever you're aiming at them. On an extra wave, we've got this incredible damage output with each weapon, so try to be careful about how focused you are on that Kohozuna. The reflux in the Splatana Stamper can cause the largest amount of DPS damage to the Kohozuna. They also need to be really close to cause that damage, so if you choose to do that, do your best to aggro that Kohozuna and keep them there in the center of the map. The Blob Lobber and the Gootuber have some really good damage output too, so it'd be helpful to cause some damage to that King Salmonid as well, but we need to focus on taking out bosses and priority targets. So with every weapon you're using, try to keep a balance on what you're taking out and what you're focusing your attention on. Don't get too much tunnel vision on that Kohozuna, and then get bounced around and splat. Stay aware of boss spawning, that way you can break away from combat, splat it, and get some quick eggs. And as always, look towards that moment right towards the first half of the extra wave, where you can activate your special to not just cause some damage to the Kohozuna, but to also take out some bosses, spawning some golden eggs early on in the wave. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye If you want to give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or at least favorite weapon is of this composition. My choice will have to be for the Spatana Stamper. That ability to splat Kohawks is super satisfying, and it's as simple as that. Alrighty, bye bye